Yep, you read that right. Time to play some Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Xbox Series X. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 running on the Xbox Series X. I know for a lot of people, this is a game that they would like to play, especially if they purchase the game on the Xbox 360, or maybe they want to play it just, you know, just general in period. It's not out anywhere as far as the PSN store. It's not out on the Xbox store, um, you know, due to licenses and whatnot. Um, as you can see, this is running pretty clean. This is braced, based off the Dreamcast emulator, Flycast, and you can see me playing really bad. I'm, I'm, I'm horrible at this. I'm terrible at this, but... You know, it's, it's 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 a decent gameplay footage, but the way this is actually achieved is actually through uh, a development mode that you can actually access through backwards compatibility because of the Xbox One. The Xbox One actually had a development mode that you can actually sign up for on Microsoft, uh, one of their websites where you pay around twenty dollars gives you access to dev mode for your Xbox One, mainly for game development. Um, that's the main thing that they were using it for but someone was actually able to port over RetroArch um, for the UWP format, um, Universal uh, Windows program, I believe, that's actually able to run on the Xbox One or even the Xbox Series X. So it's not something that's completely brand new, but it's a cool feature to have. And this is me, you know, just showing that the guide button does work. This is running on the Series X right there, as you can see. And this is actually a power stone running on the Xbox Series X through that Dreamcast emulator running through Retro Arch. Yep, testing out the sticks. As you can see, everything runs pretty smoothly. And I'll show you a little bit more in depth as far as how it's going to look as far as the XMB menu that they do have on Retro Arch. It gives you a whole list of different, you know, cores, which is essentially going to be your emulators. This way it's an all-in-one kind of shop to kind of run these games. And as you can see, it's around like a little bit of a maybe, I'd say around like a five second, six second startup for each game. As you can see, Power Stone is booting up from the Dreamcast menu. It does take a little bit. Again, it's not taking advantage of that SSD inside of the Xbox Series X or S. Don't expect huge differences in load times. This is strictly running the game as if it would be on a Dreamcast. So that's the cool part about it. I mean, you're kind of getting that authentic experience, but again, your mileage may vary on how it looks. As you can see, it's not the cleanest and clearest, but actually, you know, it does look really good, especially if you're playing on like a smaller screen. I was playing on a 4K 49 inch TV, so it does look a little bit blown up. You do see some of the jaggies, but overall you can still have fun with it. And of course, Crisis Core. You gotta run Crisis Core on this. Um, looks good, runs good plays exactly how the PSP would be but again you could kind of see and kind of notice those jaggies that do pop up right here especially on Zack's armor and his hair and his well pretty much just everywhere you see the jaggies they're there but it's definitely still useful to have and something good to check out if you have an Xbox Series X again it's around like 20 bucks with a little bit of work and how to um, you do need a computer to do this and yeah you can transfer over some of your backups and definitely check that out all right so that's all for me um as far as emulation on the xbox series x and the xbox series s that's definitely something to look into if you have maybe uh you know maybe curiosities about playing super nintendo also maybe even psp dreamcast that's definitely possible and it's more than capable of playing all of those games and more uh with a couple of hiccups i'd say around like 95 percent of the time you'll have um good use out of it as far as glitches and things like that but overall it's still playable um my take on it is that it's cool that it's there um it's a little bit of an inconvenience to get into the developer mode but that's something i would still look into if you're curious and um want to spend that extra 20 dollars for that dev mode on the xbox uh series x or s um that's all for me i'll catch you guys on the next one just again please make sure you comment like subscribe and if you want to see more videos you know throw down some comments if you want to see different games on these different emulators just let me know maybe i'll even do a twitch stream on it and um yeah i'll catch you guys on the next one peace